Africa 50 is really a, a different uh, development financial institution uh, which is operating in the infrastructure space in Africa. Uh, in that it is owned by African government, the African Development Bank, but it has a f commercial mandate. And uh, what we decided, uh, management supported by the board, is that uh, we're going to put a key focus on implementing projects as quickly as possible. Speed is one of the things that we want to be known for. In fact, uh, our uh, decision-making process is fairly efficient, it's rigorous, but fairly efficient to enable us to deliver a project which are within our control right. uh, with uh, execution speed which has never been seen uh, in this industry. Of course, things that are not within our control, we cannot by definition control them. But whenever it's within our control, we're going we're gonna to operate very, very quickly. Right now, of course, um, uh, there's a lot of comparison, and I know you've heard about it, uh, the comparison between uh, what is being done by you and what is being done uh, by uh, African Development Bank, and whether there's a, a bit of an overlap in the mandate. So we'd like to clarify before we get into a bit of detail. Well, there's no overlap in the mandate between what we do and the African Development Bank. Of course, we are all uh, institutions. We are trying to, we're trying to help Africa uh, develop uh, the continent uh, in different sectors. Uh, the African Development Bank is a key shareholder of, of Africa 50. In fact, the chairman of the board of directors of Africa 50 is also the president of the African Development Bank. Right. Africa 50 strategy is consistent uh, with uh, the strategy of the African Development Bank, the HiFi strategy. Uh, we focus on power, transport, uh, ICT, uh, gas, etc. cetera. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to focus a lot more than any other institution, including the African Development Bank, on project development, building the, bank the bankable project, the pipeline of bankable project, which then could be financed by the African Development Bank as a debt financier. So we will focus on equity. The African Development Bank will focus on providing debt financing guarantees and all the kind of uh, work that they do in terms of enabling environment, et cetera, et cetera. So there's quite a bit of a uh, complementarity, actually, I would say, between us and the African Development Bank, and we work very well together. Right, uh, let's work it back. Um, uh, let's try to create a scenario. Now, of course, uh, we're, we're intending to see uh, projects reach uh, bankability, and then uh, after that, we see uh, scale. Let's work on it from scale coming back. Um, in the idea maybe of uh, Senegal, for example, uh, we've seen most of the ones that have been highlighted are uh, heavy, uh, either uh, in regards to climate, uh, very conscious of climate, or power generation, but with the element of the lowest cost tariff in the country. If you're to scale and you've put in such heavy capital intensive projects and you've scaled and you've gone into debt financing and you're talking about one with billion, for example, just touching into to fill that gap, how are you going to ensure that the consumers actually match what you anticipate? Well, first of all, we have to say that uh, to fill, uh, to bridge the infrastructure gap in Africa and in any other region really in the world, um, the government still have a role to play. The private sector uh, should play a bigger role, but we are not arguing that all infrastructure projects, all power projects will be financed exclusively by the, inf uh, by the private sector. So we can have ways when projects are too costly, for example, some of the big hydro dams, we can have ways to bring in concessional funding from government to reduce the uh, average cost of capital so that you have a tariff which is sustainable for the end users. We always have to have that in mind. But I have to say that the power sector is a sector which is the most commercial, and yet also um, investment in the power sector can be financed with commercial money yeah. and still have a tariff which is very competitive. Take, for example, renewable project, solar project. We are seeing tariffs which are extremely competitive these days, you know, very, very good tariffs, and I believe that uh, end users can actually pay for those, uh, for those tariffs. Also, one point that I have to mention, the most expensive power is actually no power. If you don't have electricity which is connected uh, to the grid nearby, and then you use other sources uh, to, for your energy needs, actually you're paying more. So we, are be we believe that by financing those projects with efficient capital structures, we can deliver 
project at a competitive price that would be affordable for end users. Right. A final point, uh, let's uh, talk a bit uh, about the tiers of financing. Um, we've uh, seen highlighted uh, well within the program was the issue on senior debt and the players uh, that have been uh, mentioned, Overseas Corporation, Islamic Development Bank, some of that, that were not as heavily involved in the past. So just give us an overview of the kind of uh, stretching out we're seeing with the portfolio. Well, uh, what we're seeing today is that, uh, frankly, debt financing is not the issue. Uh, I used to be at the World Bank Group. Actually, I spent uh, more than 17 years at IFC and was the global head of one of the businesses there. We have seen consistently that uh, once a project is well structured and well developed, there's a lot of debt financiers that are coming in to offer, uh, you know, competitive terms for debt financing. What we are pushing at Africa 50 is to get even more competitive terms. It, for example, in terms of maturity, we are pushing debt financiers that are financing our project to extend the maturity so that we can have lower tariffs. So for me, there are a lot of players on the debt market, uh, not enough players in the most difficult segment of the market, which is the project development phase, the project preparation, some people call it. And we need to see more players coming into the project preparation so that we can increase the number of bankable projects that would be ready to receive those large sums of money sitting on the sideline, including debt financiers that would want to fund those projects. So for me, many players, the OPIC, uh, Islamic Development Bank, the African Development Bank is a financier of choice, of course, but you also have the IFCs, the International Finance Corporation, FMO, a CDC, many, many players, DFIs. We don't see a lot of commercial banks right. in, that, uh, in that space, but uh, the DFIs at this point uh, can cover most of the need in the infrastructure space. I hope that once we actually scale, then uh, we will need to find other sources of financing, including for debt. That's where we are thinking about pension funds, how to mobilize them, but we are not yet there. Today, we have enough debt to cover the project which get to financial growth. Right. Um, of course, I can't leave without asking you about the involvement of uh, the African countries. We'd imagine uh, in the East Africa we'd have a lot more. Uh, we'd understand why for uh, Kenya we'd see it uh, take center stage, but Rwanda, for example, Tanzania, large economies, but we've not seen them come um, as speedily as they've done maybe with a 0.2% with the levy on the African Union, for example. So just uh, give us your uh, brief on what's actually happening behind the scenes. Well, uh, first of all, um, we... we very happy that uh, Rwanda uh, decided to join Africa 50. Uh, President Kagame, I met with President Kagame twice, and he made a decision that uh, Africa 50 was uh, an important institution. And so today, uh, we were able to formalize uh, the accession. Uh, Rwanda became a shareholder, and so I'm very pleased and I'd like to thank uh, President Kagame and his team uh, for this decision. So we will be doing more projects in Rwanda. We started to work on Rwanda. Uh, Kenya, of course, uh, you cannot. Uh, you know, uh, you know, not mentioned that Kenya decided to increase uh, its contribution to Africa 50 and getting to 100, bi uh, 100 million dollars. That's a big check that Kenya is deciding to actually to commit to Africa 50. President Uru Kenyatta was here this morning and he expressed strong support for Africa 50. We will make sure, and I promise to him, that we're going to invest in Kenya. We are thinking about a couple of projects. I know you want me to talk about those, <laughs> but I'm not able to do that at this point. Right. But uh, next year, by next year, we're going to have some project in Kenya where Africa 50 will be an investor. So that's something. And then we continue to work with other countries in the region, certainly in East Africa, but also in Southern Africa. We need to have more shareholders joining from those regions.